Good evening ladies and gentlemen, it's the 8th of June 2011, I'm UB1980 and this is Twist News edition number 3. In this week of software and tech we have ViewSonic to introduce 7 inch and 10 inch tablet PCs, Android also the target of malware, Eight, Windows 8 to feature tablet desktop environment, Asus to include Ubuntu Linux on new EEE PCs, Australia to create a cyber defence strategy, Toshiba to release a honeycomb tablet. A report to indicate how piracy is costing software vendors. Apple invests in cloud future. Malware developers avoid Apple's countermeasures. An opinion. Risky. Some distributions of GNU slash Linux remain faithful to GNOME 2. First the news. View Sonic to introduce 7 inch and 10 inch tablet PCs that will include HDMI output, a 10 inch model which will feature an Intel processor running at 1.66 GHz and a dual boot system that runs Windows or Android. The rationale behind this is that some users are likely to want a more full featured operating system whilst also wanting the ability to default back to something less power hungry such as the Android platform. Android also the target of malware. Previously Windows has been a prominent target for malware developers. Unix like systems such as Android, OS X and the like have been seen as a harder target. Now Android is a target much like OS X. The rationale behind this is as embedded systems become more popular they are likely to be targeted regardless of their inherent security or lack thereof. Windows 8 to feature tablet desktop environment. Yes that's right Windows 8 will feature both desktop and tablet modes. It'll, be rem it'll remain a multi-application environment when running in the tablet shell. The system will be optimized to use touch-based technologies and the rationale behind is, this is that the tablet space is really becoming popular with several offerings, offerings by different vendors. Microsoft is likely to want to be a part of this market space which is growing. And here is an example of the Windows 8 shell when running under tablet mode. Asus to include Ubuntu Linux on new EEE PCs. These EEE PCs will come with Ubuntu preloaded while not running the old operating system that they used to use, Xandros. The version would be 10.10 .10, which unfortunately was not an LTS. That is a long term supported operating system. It will be a modified version which has been modified by Asus and the affected models will be 1001PXD, the 1011PX, the 1015PX. The rationale behind this is that Canonical would like to strengthen industry ties with OEMs, aiming at where Microsoft has always been successful. Using another OS perhaps allows Asus some room in negotiating future Windows licenses. Australia to create a cyber defence strategy. Yes, there's a perceived increased threat on companies and governments in their activities online. Debate over the internet security has been increasing ever since the alleged attacks on Google. The white paper will seek to identify what is needed to afford greater protection to net connected machines. The rationale behind this is that internet security is vital to continued faith in online trade and privacy, where, especially where consumers, customers, companies and governments are involved. Also, governments want to be seen to have caught up with the 21st century. Toshiba to release a honeycomb tablet. Previous tablets from Toshiba have been based on the non-tablet operating system known as Android 2. However, this system is not optimized for tablet PCs. So this new operating system, Android 3.0, otherwise known as Honeycomb, will be placed on these tablet devices to give them a similar feel to the iPad. It will feature standard definition to high definition up conversion meaning that you will see standard definition videos appear to be of a higher quality than they otherwise would be. These models will be in 8, 16 and 32 bit correction, 8, 16 and 32 gig and will be available with prices between $429 and $579 US. The rationale behind this is as a sort of re-entry into the tablet market, Ta Toshiba does not want to be seen as an also ran, so it wants to run cutting edge software that people recognise, such as Android Honeycomb. A report to indicate how piracy is costing software vendors. A report has been released which will indicate how much p 
software piracy is costing software vendors in India. It has allegedly cost $2.7 billion US in the period between 2009 to 2010. Allegedly, a common cause is that people are installing multiple copies of proprietary software on multiple devices whilst only obtaining one license. The governments are interested in this because it also affects tax receipts. The rationale behind this is that piracy cost figures assume one would have bought the software if one could not have received the product at no cost. Essentially, this is an opportunity cost of lost sales. Apple invests in cloud future. Apple will release a cloud-based system where file syncing across several iDevices will be possible, including contacts and media. This will encourage le legitimate media storage by investiga investigating pre-existing media files on devices and then offering to replace these for legitimate ones for a set fee of $29. The rationale seems to, to be to offer a carrot while avoiding the stick in promoting the reduction in copyright infringement. This will likely be a convenient a source of advantage for users while making some money for Apple and media copyright owners. Malware developers avoid Apple's countermeasures. Quick updates have been applied to malware to ensure its effectiveness. Essentially when Apple has made new patches for their software, these malware developers have been evading them by updating theirs. Essentially this indicates a sort of cat and mouse uh, system that they're playing much like happened which happened with Sony. Essentially, it, these malware developers have been increasingly uh, efficient and effective at developing new malware. Opinion. Well, some thought about GNU Linux and the future of GNOME 2.x. Essentially, you get some distributions like Mint that are retaining the old uh, versions of GNOME. And uh, some users out there are skeptical about how long this can last for. Essentially, I think the situation is like with QT. Um, when we moved from QT3 to QT4, there was pressure, I suppose, on KDE to move up the chain as well. And that was external pressure. However, this is internal pressure. There's been a move to GDK3. I'm surprised that a lot of applications such as Pigeon and Firefox are not yet using GDK3, but that I think will follow through soon. And as GDK2 becomes essentially deprecated, like HAL uh, was to um, DBus, and as I said, like uh, QT3 to QT4, it's just a, a matter of time, I suppose, before GNOME 2.x is uh, no longer going to be around, which makes an interesting situation for stable distros like uh, Debian. Uh, it's interesting to note that things like Scientific Linux and uh, and Red Hat are still using uh, GNOME 2.x. So it only stands to reason that I think eventually we're going to see on these GNOME desktops either an adoption of Unity uh, or really an adoption of GNOME 3. I think avoiding the portable paradigm is, unless you're going to use KDE as your main desktop, is it's almost unavoidable on these mainstream, um, I guess, uh, the kitchen sink sort of distros. Of course, if you're running something like Arch Linux, Slackware, um, you really have a choice about what you're going to do there. Of course, Slackware uses KD by default, but I'm led to believe that there is the availability of GNOME. Essentially, guys, you know, debate amongst in the comments. I, I'm not really sure where this is going to go for sure, but um, yeah, with any sense of certainty looking at the past, You'd have to say that uh, I think that GDK2 will eventually be de deprecated, we'll move to GDK3 and GNOME 2.x will be a long forgotten, perhaps, perhaps it'll get forked, who knows. Now we have the weekly chess problem, what to play and win, it's an interesting, interesting situation, it's actually quite simple, um, but it teaches an important um, tactic in chess. So. I won't give you the solution. The solution for the last problem that was given in Twist News number two, uh, one of our members, uh, one of our subscribers placed a, um, a note there for the correct solution. So if you'd like to take a look at that, that'll give you that. Anyway, just remember as usual, to a message to our viewers, uh, please subscribe and vote. Look forward to Twist News number four,
There should be a review coming up very shortly. There's been a number of review this re- reviews this week, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed them, and I hope you're enjoying Twist News. If you are, please subscribe and vote.